Hey everybody, John DeChristopher here. And uh, I first of all want to thank you all for supporting Live From My Drum Room and my newest podcast, Track Talk. I'm bringing you an excerpt today from an episode of Live From My Drum Room from November 2nd, 2021 with the legendary Kenny Jones. And in this little excerpt, we talk about Kenny's iconic playing on the Rolling Stones, It's Only Rock and Roll, But I Like It. Um, if you didn't already know that that's Kenny Jones, you, you just learned that. So we're going to talk about that for a few minutes, and then I'm going to play the track afterward. So I hope you enjoy it. And also within the description, I will put the link so you can watch the entire episode where we talked about Kenny's work with, of course, the faces, the small faces, and the who, and, uh, you know, lots of other great things. So check it out. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching the show, and uh, thanks for subscribing to Live From My Drum Room and Track Talk. And remember, one last thing. No drummers are ever harmed during Track Talk or Live From My Drum Room. All right. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks. All right. Cool. We'll be out of there once. Um, we, we were just talking about um, Stay With Me, and, and I just have to say that the, the two-bar fill that you do at the end of it is, is the greatest. If It's, it's oh. one of the, if not the greatest, breaks ever you think so <laughs> Ab absolutely man absolutely. I, mean, every time I get to it I, I wish I, I said oh I kept thinking I could have done a lot better than that and I, uh, but uh, if, I, if I don't do it exactly the same everyone has a go at me like, you know, <laughs> well, not the band but just just fans and stuff so I try and keep it as more, more or less exactly the same well yeah when I so I I want to tell you I saw you I think it, it was the last tour that the original, well, it wasn't the original because Ronnie Lane wasn't in the band, but in 75, after Woody had played with the Stones yeah. and you guys did a tour, I, I live in, outside of Boston and you guys played in Boston in October of 1975. Peter Frampton was the opening band, you might remember. Yeah. Um, I think they yeah. did some dates. And, you, and I remember when you played Stay With Me, <clears throat> you did the break, you did the fill at the end and it wasn't exactly like the record and i was sort of waiting for it but what you played i remember and i've heard a live version of the song from that tour you played almost like a max roach um how can i explain it but it was it was of course very similar but you you even added something even kind of hipper and cooler you did this like little triplety thing toward the end of it do that and that and that and that do you remember uh, yeah i yeah. kind of i was experimenting <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it was 45 years ago, but I, whatever, 46 years ago, but I remember it. It was like, you know, I, I was glued to my seat well, I just feel that I should have done a really fast parody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was great. I mean, it was a, it was a fabulous show. And I remember you took a, a extended drum solo during I'm Losing You. Like, as you were just saying, it, it live, yeah. it became, and that was, of course, in those days, everybody played drum solos, so that it made sense. You know, that was like a a part of the night where. Well, it, used I, be, it used to be a horror story for me. Sometimes I got really tense every time I got to a, to the drum solo. I kept thinking, I wonder what's going to happen now. It's because one time the I was doing. I think we were playing Finsbury Park and a, a theatre there, and there was a pub. On, you walked outside the stage door on the corner of the road. There was a pub. So I started playing you know, the solo, and all of a sudden it was going on a bit too long. I think, where is everybody? And I'm trying to give this, you know, the, the, the sort of counting for Ronnie to come in back in, and he's not there. No one's here. This went on, on and on and on. <laughs> 20 minutes later, they come running over the stage, started, laugh, started laughing. I'm nearly, I was just about to throw the towel in. They went up the pub. <laughs> so anything can happen in that bloody solo. Yeah, that's great. Um, I was going to, you know, I know I'm, I'm, and I apologize, I'm jogging your memory for all this things that happened so long ago. But it, again, I've always been fascinated with um, what little I know about you playing on It's Only Rock and Roll, but I like it, which I oh, remember yeah. I'd, I'd learned that um, sometime in the early 80s. Then I, I, I bought Max Weinberg's uh, book, The Big Beat, where you were, inter he interviewed you and you, you talked a little bit about that. And, yeah. and, uh, and I know that it was a song that, that Mick Jagger and Ronnie Wood were sort of jamming on and then and they rang you up to come in and play right basically to put a, a reference track like a well it was uh, 
it was um, a song we hadn't even, they hadn't even started really. So when I get there, I mean, I, when when I get this call from Ronnie saying, uh, Kenny, we haven't got a drum out. And, oh, blimey. I was just and it was always cool when I got one leg into bed. <laughs> and I lived on Richmond Park. Uh, we both lived around Richmond Park. Uh, and at night they closed the gate to Richmond Park. So for me to get to Woody's, going across the, across, across the park, would take me oh. two minutes. Go all the way around is... Is it more like 15 minutes or well, a bit longer, 20 minutes? But also I'd had a drink, so I didn't want to get caught for drink driving. So it was a tense moment getting there. I get there. One night it would be Bob Dylan there, you know, another night it'd be Eric Clapton, whatever. This this particular night was uh, I, it was just Jagger, Mick Jagger. So we just, I don't know, Kenny, how are you doing? Yeah, great. So we started playing that night. I was just playing away. And Ronnie was in the control room working at the engineer, doing the engineer bit, because he just got a load of outboard equipment, new stuff. So he's playing around with that. He said, keep playing, keep playing. So just me and, me and Mick together. Yeah. And, and suddenly we hit this groove. And Mick said, he said, uh, he said, oh, play it, play it, play it like that. And I went, okay, so I said, I said, it's too late. I'm going to play it like this. I said, anyway, it's only rock and roll. <laughs> so we kept, we kept, we kept Buzzing around, that's that's how it happened. And we ended up sort of playing it. I just thought nothing more of it. Went home the next day, thought, forgot all about it. Wow. Then I got a call saying, mm. saying, uh, oh, you're on this the Stones album. I said, what? And they said, well, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. And it says, they're, they're single. I went, oh, what? So I called up Charlie straight away. I said, Charlie, I'm really sorry. I never meant this to happen. I, d- I would never be you know, stealing anyone's thunder like that. And he said, he said, all right, it's all right, Kenny, don't worry, because this is the special thing about Charlie. He was such a lovely gentleman. I said, Kenny, it's okay, sounds like me anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. just, uh, good old Charlie. Oh, I know, bless him, I know, yeah. No, I, I, I'd heard that story, yeah, that, and and it, it does sound like him, and, and but, well, it's, but- Well, funny enough, I was singing about Charlie, when I was playing it, so when you think about that, you kind of, it kind of I'm sure he just he, Charlie. I play Charlie. Well, it, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing track, Kenny. I, I think, you know, if if you had only recorded that one song, I think it puts you at the top of the mountain. I, I think because it's 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 such the feel is so impossible to. Yeah, it's a great feel. I like the feel. Nick. Oh. I tell you why. It's, uh, it was it was about three o'clock in the morning. And I was bloody tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> yeah, no, let's just keep everyone up late. Really, sort of keep the drummer up late because when when you get really tired, you're kind of so far behind. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you do you recall? I mean, do you know if the 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 version that we hear on the song is that? Um, like, did you do a bunch of takes, or is, were there just a couple of takes, and or did oh, it just? I, don't forget, it was a bit more. It was late, late, and it was just a just a quick sort of rough de- demo type song, you know. Yeah. I, did, I didn't think we were, I didn't even think we were gonna, they were going to keep it, you know. So yeah, we, I think we just uh, probably ran through it a couple of times. That's it. Well, you know, I I, I had um, the drummer Andy Newmark. I don't know if you know Andy. I know, I know uh, Andy. Yeah, you know, Andy, I had Andy on with me a few months ago. We were talking about that because he had done some of Ronnie's solo record, um, I think just before, yeah, before that. And, and, and he, we were talking about you and I said, I hope to someday talk to Kenny about this, but um, he recalled there being what he, he recalled a Ludwig kit that like Ronnie had set up in his studio. It might've been, he said it might've been one of your old kits, maybe. No, I, I gave him a drum kit, which is the worst thing I ever did. That's why he called me up a big time. <laughs> So it was one of your old Ludwig kits. That was... I think it's a blonde one. You think it's a, it's a, oh, your blonde one. Uh, yeah, Ludwig, I think. The maple one, yeah. And do you, re- I know this is really, this is really pushing my luck asking you these questions, but do you remember what the symbols were? I'm guessing they were, they were pasty something. I would have thought in those days it would have been, it would have been pasty. Yeah. And I, I kind of, if I liked a Zildjian, I'd get, I'd just mix and match them. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, I mean it's, it's the, the hi hats in in the, the like the crash that you hit a lot. I mean, it's it's so, so, sound edge, you know, the, the, yeah, yeah, the high, with the, the, the beveled bottom edge. Yeah, yep. I, I love that. And did you ever use the Peisty Giant Beats, or are you like the two thousand twos, or do you remember like? I've you, I've used them all at different times. If you see what I mean. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I've I've still got the. Um, the 26 inch pasty symbol, which is huge. I, I recorded that, when I got that, I thought this is such a great sound. And when I was recording uh, the, with the small faces, uh, we did this track called Rolling Over. Mm. It was like, it was all symbols. Like, shh, 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 shh. So and that's how we, if you listen to Rolling Over, it's all symbol. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. I've seen pictures of that that 26 inch symbol. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, so I, that it's just a, it's a, that's such a fascinating story that you, that you recorded that song as what you thought was going to be a demo. And I, and I'll just say as a, as a drummer and as a, you know, a very, um, uh, you know, I was really into Charlie's playing at that time. And I remember hearing that song on the record in context with the rest of the album. And even at like 13 or 14, it's just sounded really different to me. Do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. It, the the sound of the drums and the playing and uh and then i later found out it was you and it all made sense that okay that's that's kenny jones you know that's okay here's it's only rock and roll but i like it with of course mick jagger on vocals kenny jones on drums the great willie weeks on bass keith richards on guitars and i believe david bowie is doing a backup vocal in there somewhere. Ronnie Wood played on the demo version that Kenny talks about, uh, but my understanding is that that was then later taken off and it's all Keith. Uh, it, the band is basically Keith on all the guitars, Kenny Jones on drums, Willie Weeks on bass, and Mick on vocals. All right, check it out.
the great Kenny Jones on drums. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. You can hear him playing those Ludwig drums recorded at Ronnie Wood's studio, The Wick. And that was one of his old drum sets that he gave to Ronnie to keep in the studio. Andy Newmark talked about recording on that same drum set, uh, I think earlier that same year, 1974, working on Ronnie Wood's first solo record. Also, I believe, with Willie Weeks on bass. Um, so a lot of history there. And um, to the best of Kenny's recollection, he believes they were Peisty Sound Edge hi-hats, and probably Peisty crashes. Um, he was endorsing Peisty at the time. But uh, that's as much as I could get from him. But it's just such an iconic song. Uh, sounds like Charlie. Kenny's doing his best to channel Charlie. He had no idea that that little scratch demo that he was recording that night in the middle of the night would end up on the record. The rest is history. Um, Charlie, of course, said, it's okay. It sounds like me anyway. So anyway, there's a little bit of the backstory too. It's only rock and roll, but I like it. One of my favorite Rolling Stone songs. And, uh, you know, as told by the great Kenny Jones. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again really soon. See ya.